Hey there, so let's move to lecture six and let's talk now, uh, now about dynamic meshes or moving bodies now in OpenFlow. So basically when we talk about dynamic meshes, moving mo bodies, it's, it's, it's not you are moving <clears throat> our body or your whole domain, or even you can use a lattice mesh refinement that I'm not showing here. So you have all these capabilities available in OpenFund that can be also used together with, with all the previous models that we have used so far. So as you can see, things can get very complicated. Probably something that you see common of all these cases that they are unsteady, okay? So this is a price that you need to pay when you are dealing with moving bodies that they are fully unsteady, so they are time consuming. In some cases, you might reach a stationary state. It might be a good idea to use you no know, local time stepping or some other similar approach. So when it comes to to <clears throat> moving bodies in open form, there are many solvers and models you now that you can use with all the physics that we have seen so far. So between the model among the models that you will find available, you will have prescribed motion, rigid body motion, slightest meshes, and MRF. Okay, so this we're going to address these models in three tutorials. Okay, so here you impose the mold, the, the motion here, the the body is moving according to external forces, and here you, we have rotation now. So stuff like impellers, propellers, we can do. We have two different actions. Okay, so setting the body into motion is not different from what we what we have seen so far. Okay, we only need to set the boundary conditions and the specific models to put the body into motion. That being said. The, the motion solver and the kinematics, how you're going to move the body is chosen this new dictionary, constant dynamic mesh. And then also you need to set up boundary condition for the moving bodies, okay? So we have a new boundary condition, point displacement that is going to represent how the patches is moving. This is used for prescribed motion, by the way, and read a bit of motion. Then also in all cases where you have something that is moving, you need to add a boundary condition in velocities, moving wall velocity, okay? Not anymore you're going to use fixed wall, fix, fixed velocity, okay? So this is very important. If you choose the fixed velocity, it will run, but you are go going to get the wrong result. So be careful, always set this one. As usual, I use your, your pneumatics because now we have a, uh, <clears throat> something that is a little bit more severe, so you need to adjust a little bit. And uh, if you want to know all the solvers, because not every single solver is compatible with dynamic mesh. So the first one that is not compatible, we have seen is Icofon. But then if you want to know that, just type this in the terminal and all the, in, in this directory, and all solvers that you see, they're, they, they, they are compatible. So the solvers that we have used so far, like stuff like Interphone, Pimple Phone, Raw Pimple Phone, and Boolean Simple Phone, all of them works with dynamic meshes, okay? So most of the tutorials that we have done, they are, they are compatible. Uh, here you have now some information about the source code location, if you, are, uh, if you are interested in something that probably I would like to point out is boundary conditions, now because there are different conditions to set up for prescribed motion. So as you enter here, you, you can see what are the different kin kinematics implemented and you can see the specific entries of each one. So let's work with the, with the first tutorial. Uh, before that, just to show you uh, what I mentioned about boundary conditions. So as you go, remember that you have the path here. So as you go in, in this one is RC, SV motion. Okay, boom, 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 boom. It should be something here and is with motion point patch solvers, put it here, and here you have all the the, 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 the prescribed kinematics that you can put. Also, you will find more information, stuff like the models that you can use to prop uh, propagate the, 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 the mesh deformation in the domain and so on, okay? So feel free to, 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 to explore the source code. So we go to the first case, okay, so this one, is, we're going to talk about sliding meshes and MRF, okay, so basically sliding meshes is this, so this mesh, you have the all the steps for how to generate this mesh in the appendix, now there is the supplement too, and then it is explaining how to generate it, I'm not going to talk much about that, but see that here, sliding mesh, see that this body is moving, and here, MRF, multiple reference frames, see that the body is not moving. But at the end, see that you, you obtain very similar uh, outcomes. So the big advantage of this one here is that you can use a steady solver. So you can reach 
Now that is steady solution very fast and stay here you need to run in on a steady model mode okay so in this case we are obtaining same same solutions in some cases it might happen that this solver does not work but most of the cases when you are dealing with rotating bodies mrf it, it will give you good results also something that you can do is get a solution here which is fast and then use as a starting point from on a static so we're going to see the basic options now how to, to, to set up these two cases so the, the important thing that to put this ball into motion disregarding of the approach that you want to use you need to select a region of the cells that you want to put into motion or where you want to apply a source term okay mrf is a source term okay and a very specific one that you are going to put at here not those extra forces not to simulate no uh, to <clears throat> to simulate that the body you know those forces that you have when your body is, is rotating so this is important and these are the stops that, the steps that we're going to see here so first to do the mrf everything is set up in mrf properties okay we are not going to use the dynamic mesh dictionary we use this dictionary that we have here so here you simply need to do the selection okay so this cell set you already selected you created that at mesh time so please go to to supplement to that you will see how this is done but this is must be created as at mesh in time or you can use also topo set to to create this so see that we put this region into motion okay you, you, you assign this mrf properties remember that the impeller here moving wall velocity and in the chaff also you can add this rotating wall velocity to have everything now <coughs> say that makes with physical sense now so if this is rotating this one should be also rotating so you add this this condition there so then if we use <coughs> Is we use a slightly mesh it's a slightly different so again you need to select this region okay but besides selecting this region you need to select here baffles here you are going to find two regions one that is fixed two faces one that is fixed and the other that is rotating and you are going to intercommunicate uh information between both patches okay because one is moving and the other is fixed so we're going to see that later and here this is exactly the same as the M mrf so look at the differences here so if you are going to run mrf you use this of course also mrf you run steady so relatively easy you select this also active gels and then the origin axis and you give here the omega the angular velocity which is radians per second by the way and if you are running a slightly meshes this is your setup and see that you need to access different libraries but still you need to select that cell zone but there are some additional steps now that one that you need to create the baffles okay so this is here i just <clears throat> explaining again but just go to the supplement so supplement two that you have all this explanation but basically when you create baffles you are going to create those two phase zones that are going to change information using this cyclic ami boundary condition so one phase is fixed the other is moving later we're going to see that and then we use this command split baffle to separate this buffer okay because at this point they are connected when you use this one you just disconnect that and then you can move the other face on okay so these are the input of the create baffle dictionaries okay remember this face on next to it exists and usually you create that and mesh in time or using top of site so you select this face on that it exists and then you apply this name here this is a standard to create this cyclic ami and then with the split baffles you topologically split that so what is happening is this okay so see that you are going to have a fixed domain a rotating domain and then here you have an a ami interface so see that the fixed domain is going to have a face here that is fixed and the rotating domain is going to have a face here that is moving with this region and this is it okay you see that fixed patch and rotating patch and see what, what is happening is that you are interpolating the solution between here and here so there, there there is some 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 information that you are going to lose now so here it's important that the two meshes they should have roughly speaking the same dimension otherwise we are going to add some numerical diffusion okay but it's just a weighted interpolation that you are doing be between different patches okay 
So you can take this case and put it into motion, okay? So there is this very nice utility. This is indicated for sliding meshes. Now you just move, move dynamic mesh and then here with this option and you can check the quality of the AMI interpolation, okay? So see here that fix and moving patch. Okay, and see that in the screen, you're going to see this mess message. Okay, it's telling you that this is the quality and use it, this, these coefficients, they should be close to one. As you see here that they are close to one, this is okay. Is the start to deviate a lot from one, stuff like 0 0.9 or 1.1. That is telling you that is a pro, there is a problem in the interpolation. It's not so good. It's still, you can run, but maybe you are introducing some, some numerical errors in your solution. So this is all, here you have some additional steps. So we're going to run with pimple foam for a sliding meshes and simple foam for MRF. However, remember that MRF is, is, is done with a steady, but you can also use on a steady solver, but it makes no sense now because the idea of MRF is to, to reach a steady state. You can also use local time stepping as we talked previously, okay? So let's go into our directory. Okay, so if you go here into advanced physics, dynamic meshes, sliding meshes, okay, you have it here, CSTR, and you have the two cases, okay? So to show you just MRF simple, so here you have the steps how to run everything, okay? You will generate the mesh and everything. I'm not going to run this one just to show you that the only difference here is that you enter into constant and see that you have this dictionary. Okay, and at mesh in time, you are going to regenerate this region and you apply this source term. Okay, this is a source term that it is in, in, into this uh, MR, MRF properties dictionary. It's not in FV models, okay? They put it uh, in a separate file, okay? And then Remember that here in this case, we're running a steady. So as you go, as we skin, it's an steady case. Okay. So the, the meshing steps are basically the same, but in the slightest meshes, you have that extra step that you create the baffles and split the mesh. That's see here that you have this additional step that you are going to split the mesh. And this is what I want to show you. So let me go here and dynamic meshes and slided meshes and Okay, this one. Okay, so let's run first. Okay, run mesh. Okay, so we're going to do here the mesh. Okay, we was going to set up the mesh. And just a, a reminder, I will open a snappy X mesh here. And that topological selection that we're doing to separate the face is done here. So as you read your snappy X mesh here in surfaces, you will see this entry. This is the entry where we do that. So we're using a, a, a body, a geometrical topolo entity, this one, this STL, to select that group of faces. And when you select that group of faces, you give this name. So you have a group of faces and a, a group of cells. So you give this name and that's all, off you go. Okay, you have it there. And probably, yeah, this is not updated. Uh, let me update this one because here it shouldn't be uh, cell sun inside, it should be mold inside. Okay, so let me stop it. So still now that I have, I had this, this dictionary set up for open phone 8, they changed it now. So let me confirm that one. So advanced this one, you have it updated. So let me compare dictionaries here. So see that this is the right one. So let me use this one. Okay, so let me update it. Okay, let me, let me stop a little bit because probably I think I will need to move this file. This, this, let me, let me move a few files. Okay, boom, boom, I copy it there. And now advanced physics, dynamic meshes, slotted meshes. And let me put these files there, okay? These are the updated files. Okay, so let me set up again. This, so when doing the mesh, then we're going to visualize that we're going to have those patches created. So see the, my advice here, open this one here and look at the 
a step. So these are the critical steps. A split baffles, okay, create baffles. So you open a dictionary, create baffles. See that this region you created in the snap, and now using this 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 region, this information, you can create this buffer. This buffer is still there connected. So what to disconnect those buffers? But you, you do is split buffers, and that's all. Okay, and these are additional steps. Okay, so then after you have the mesh, you can go and run this this script. Now this one is going to just run move dynamic meshes, and that's all. So let's wait while it finish and recall that uh, MRF is pretty much the same you now the meshing stage, but we don't need to do that topological separation. And still you can do it if you want, but it's not necessary. And actually it's doing that, but we don't we don't need to do it. Now those are extra steps. We only need to select the group so of cell and in that group of cells you apply your sources using this this file. So after we finish the mesh. Let's see what is that group of, of cells that we select. And at this point, we are done. So see that now it's creating baffle, it's doing all those steps. Okay. And important that at the end, when you run check mesh, see that here you have two regions. In one region will be fixed, the other will be moving, and here you have all your patches. So if I now type Paraphon. Okay, I want to type a Paraphon. I want to use Paraphon because I want to use this auction now because I have the, those sets and those sounds. So let me show you here. First, look at that you have the patches. Okay, so it will be AMI1 and AMI2. Okay, do two different patches, but you are interpolating the solution there. And then see that you have here your cell zone that okay the phase on this is the one that you are using to do the splitting and everything and i think this is your this is the zone okay this is the cell set okay you have it there so it's, if i split there okay it still is the phase so the cell set this will be okay you have the regions also okay here cell inner volume okay so see that you have it there and what you are doing now is that you are putting the, the whole stuff into motion but remember that also you have those cyclic ami patches and you are going to interpolate solution okay so let's put it into motion let me run this one run move dynamic mesh okay so if i run that one okay see that while it, while, it, while it's running so that is giving you uh, this weights, interpolation weight. So see that they need to be close to one, is there? The difference is large. You better remesh because you have to have, uh, you need to have similar meshes in those patches. But see that it's running smoothly, okay? You can run this command. I think it's running in parallel, okay? No, it's running in serial. Uh, here you are not running the simulation, You're just putting the body into motion to check this interpolation, okay? So this is advisable now before running, just check that everything is okay, check a whole, a whole rotation that you have a good interpolation that those weights are not very, that, that interpolation is not low quality. But see that while doing that one, it's always checking, excusing orthogonality, everything, okay? Here you are not running simulation, so you can use a large timestamp now. So I could have used here 0 0.1, whatever, just to see the rotation. So you have this, the solution the, there, and let me open here part of them, and just to show you what, what is happening here. So you can do also this in 2D. So there is another case there. You will see the uh, this one is 2D, 3D, 2D, and. Okay, so let's see what is happening here and see that. Let me select the impeller. Okay, and see that the impeller is rotating with the whole region. Okay, the whole region also this cell zone. And let me put the cells. See that it's rotating. But you have this interface. Let me stop. You have this interface and there is one interface that is rotating and the other that is fixed. And let me go to the beginning and see here. 
time step zero, they are perfectly aligned and see that now you have this. So what is happening is that in each time step you interpolate the solution or open for an interpolate the solution. And the idea that these cells, they need to be matching, not to, to have a low interpolation. Okay, so at meshing time, be careful that to, to insert, you, you need to generate the mesh in such a, so, such a way that you have there you know, a good matching between different cells. Uh, let me change the color just to put it into motion. Da, 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 okay, there you go. Okay, you press play. And this is what we have. Okay, so this region moving, the rest is fixed, and what's happened here is interpolate the solution. Everything is controlled automatically by open for now, but you need to set the condition. So remember that whatever is moving, okay, in you, you're going to put it here, moving world velocity, okay? Here we, we don't need to add that, the new file, the point displacement, because that is just for prescribed motion, okay? Then you have this dictionary, the rest is exactly the same, okay? Remember also machine time, always control this one that is already gone, okay? And this is all, okay? So these are sliding meshes, okay? For MRF, will be exactly the same mesh, but instead you're going to use MRF properties and the, the cell selection is not moving. You are applying a sourcer. Now you are adding no, those rotational forces, everything. That is a very good approximation most of the time, okay? So that's all for this case. Okay, thank you for your attention. Also, you can run the simulation, but have in mind that these are start to become time consuming, okay? So thank you for your attention and see you in the next video. Bye.